All right, guys, so here's a crack we're going to be repairing today in our ceiling. These cracks can happen for many reasons, like your home settling, a bad installation, or in our case, water damage, which has been fixed now. And we can move on to repairing the drywall the right way because you can't just slap mud on it and hope for the best. And these cracks can happen anywhere in your home, but the process I'm going to show you is pretty much the same for all of them. Let's get started. Welcome to the Comar Project. The first thing we want to do is find out where our ceiling joists are. And sometimes you can see where the old nail pops are, but to be sure, I like to use a stud finder and mark where the middle of the joist is. Most of the time, the drywall will begin to sag from whatever the issue you experienced to make the crack in the first place. And if we don't secure it, that crack will show back up in a couple of weeks no matter what you do. I'm using inch and 5 8 drywall screws and I drive them in on both sides of the crack. In this case, I was able to pull the drywall up by an eighth of an inch in most spots. But that also creates another problem that we have to deal with and that's exposing the nail pops, or in my case, screws. If you have an older home built before the 1950s, you may just have nails instead of screws and then you'll have to drive them in with a nail punch. But I got lucky and I can drive them in past the drywall with my drill. Now that our drywall is secured to the joist, we need to open up that crack a little further. I know you're probably saying to yourself, why are we making it worse? But we need to give the compound a place to sit and actually grab that seam. So with a utility knife, I made a V-shaped groove in that crack. And wherever I have a crack ending, in my case, I have two cracks, I made a circle around the end. This will prevent that crack from wanting to crack any further. And if it wants to keep going, it'll just come back onto itself, stopping that crack from ever getting any longer. This is just an added precaution and should not be needed if the drywall is secured. But just in case I miss something, this will prevent it from ever getting any bigger in case it does come back. Okay, so now we have our drywall ready. It's secured. It's not going anywhere, hopefully. It's time to apply the first coat of mud. And in my opinion, the very first coat is critical. And I only use Durabond for the first coat. It is so hard that it almost makes it impossible sand, giving that crack the best chance for success. I mix it with water to a consistency between peanut butter and ketchup and apply it using a six inch trowel. Now, when I first apply it to the trowel, I like to remove about an inch or so from both ends of it. That way the mud in the middle has a place to spread on that trowel when you're applying it and doesn't fall onto your face. When I apply the Durban to the crack, I don't want to be crazy with it because it does dry so hard. It's almost like concrete. I just want it three to four inches wide so that it holds the mesh I'm applying. Once the mesh is stuck to the wet mud, I can go over it with a little bit more Durban, locking it in place. Just make sure you cover all the circles we made as well if you choose to go that route. And the full length of the crack with about an inch or two past it. And whether you use the mesh or tape, that's up to you. For cracks like this, I like to use the mesh because you can see the crack through it for the first coat, making it easier to see in case you miss something. And you can add more mesh at that point. With tape, you can't really tell because once it covers the crack, it just covers it. Now, like I mentioned before, this stuff dries rock hard. So to avoid heavy duty sanding or scraping, I wipe it down with a damp sponge to smooth everything out before it's too late. So we have our first coat of Durabond on there. It's looking great. If you got a couple of high spots, just go ahead and run it with a putty knife and you should be good to go from there. Next, we're gonna be moving on to our final coats. And depending on how well you put on the first one, you might just have to do one more coat. Uh, I'm guessing I'm probably gonna have to do two here just because I have some waviness going on on the ceiling. And you can pretty much use any kind of finishing joint compound for these last two coats. Whatever is in your store, whatever is the easiest for you. I always like to use dust control from Sheetrock. It's easy to work with and the best thing about it is it comes in a pre-mixed bucket. This is a three and a half gallon bucket that you can pick up at any of your hardware store. It does also come in bags, so for longer storage, if you wanna keep the bags around for two, three years, you could probably use the powder stuff. Stuff will last you probably a good year without going bad, but since I do so many renovation projects around the house, this will go pretty quickly for me. Because this stuff dries white, like the ceiling, I like to add a few drops of food coloring to it so I can see what I'm doing. And it really helps to see the different shades when it's dried for sanding. To apply it, I'm using an eight inch and a 12 inch trowel. And of course, my camera died as I started it and I was only able to record the end part of it. 
But no worries, we're gonna be doing the same thing again on the third coat and I got all that footage. But on this second coat, you wanna float out the mud about 10 inches in each direction from the crack and when done, it should look something like this. And don't worry about the trowel marks, unless you're super drywall guy or gal, they will be there and it's easy to scrape them off when it dries. I gave it a very light sanding with 220 grit on my orbital sander just to knock down the high spots and the outside edges feathered out a bit. You don't want to push that sander way too much and remove what you just did. Uh, we just want to take down those high spots, smooth everything out a little bit, and most of the sanding is going to be done on that final coat, which we're ready for right now. This is the same exact type of mud, but it's tinted yellow and it's called plus three tinted. I wanted to get some to show you guys what it looks like because it's way more noticeable than just adding food coloring and it does help on that final coat. I want the least amount of sanding when I'm done. So with this one, I took my time and feathered it out even further than that second coat, about three feet in total. And it doesn't really matter which direction you pull your trowel, as long as you make long strokes with it, making it as smooth as you possibly can. And here's how that final coat came out for me. I did end up touching up the corner to the wall because my wall was really bad and, and just needed to be straightened out. But unless absolutely necessary, you shouldn't have to do that and just stay on the ceiling. I gave it 24 hours and I can start sanding again with the orbital, but only staying to the outside, feathering it to the ceiling. When I got to the corner, I used a medium grit sanding sponge to make the corner nice and sharp. And then I can feather it out a little bit more with the sander. With the edges feathered out, I grabbed a pole sander with 120 grit sandpaper and sanded the middle section of our repair. They have ones now that you can attach a vacuum to it, which will catch the majority of the dust, but I've had this one for years and it hasn't let me down yet. So I'm gonna leave a link to it, plus all the tools and materials that I used in this video in the description below if you wanna check them out. Ooh, and that's pretty much it guys. All you need is a little bit of primer, paint, and you're good to go. The primer I'm using is called Bin from Zinser, which has great stain blocking properties and I use it pretty much for all my paint projects. But what I'm really excited about is the new ceiling paint that I found from Valspar. It goes on purple so you can see where you're painting and then when it dries, it turns white. I don't know if you should be excited about something like paint, but if you've ever painted on a white ceiling with white paint, you know what I mean. And there you go guys, no more crack and it's gone forever. Well, at least until the next issue that the house presents, I'm sure of it. But no matter how many cracks you may have or where they are, you can take this process and apply it through your entire house. So if you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those down below and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss upcoming projects. I got a lot going on this summer for exterior projects, so make sure you guys hit that bell notification. Thank you so much for joining me on this experience. I'll see you guys next time.